that does inherit any money but inheritance is a very common thing for instance I've inherited something you've inherited something and even plants have inherited something and by the end of our lesson I think you'll be able to tell us what it is you have inherited I have a diagram of a plant here the male portion of the plant produces pollen. The pollen combines with an egg to form a seed. A seed is a new individual. Now how can this pollination take place? Pollen from the same flower can combine with the egg. We call this self-fertilization or pollen from another flower may combine with this egg. And this would be cross-fertilization. Pollen from another flower combining with an egg of another flower. That's cross-fertilization. A man who studied heredity quite a little was Gregor Mendel. He lived about a hundred years ago and he had a small garden. In this garden he had plants of the common vegetable pea plant. He noticed that some of these plants were tall and others were short. Now Mendel took seeds from these plants. They self-pollinated. That is, pollen combined with the egg in the same flower to produce a new seed. And as long as he planted these seeds, he got nothing but tall plants. And the same occurred with the short plant. Always he got short plants from the seeds that he planted. In other words, when he, he Mendel then thought, why don't we try and cross these two plants and see what happens? Mendel wondered what he would get. Would he get short plants, medium-sized plants, or all tall plants. Now Mendel then said that something was being covered up since the pollen came from the tall plants represented by capital T and since it had two characteristics, one from its pollen, one from its egg, and that the short plant also had two characteristics for shortness, Mendel said that the tall characteristic was dominant over the short characteristic, which he said was recessive. Now what did he mean by dominant and recessive? By a dominant characteristic, we mean that characteristic which covers up or masks out another characteristic. In this case, sh the shortness of this plant was masked out by the tallness in this plant. Now since this plant was used for pollen and this plant was used for the egg, we'd find that every plant would have a tall characteristic characteristic. What is the dominant characteristic? Tallness. It covers up the short characteristic. Mendel called these plants a hybrid. That is, 
a plant which differs when we, when we cross two plants with different characteristics, we get a hybrid. We cross tall and short, this is a hybrid. Mendel next crossed two of the hybrid plants. This time, he got three tall to each short plant. Perhaps we can see why. If we use this plant for pollen and this plant for the egg, this tall characteristic could combine with this tall characteristic to produce this kind of a plant. Or this tall characteristic could combine with this short characteristic to produce this plant. Or the tall characteristic in this egg could combine with the short characteristic in the pollen. Or two short characteristics in the pollen and from the egg could combine. Let's see what has happened here. We found that we had a characteristic of dominance and recessiveness. And that the dominance masked or covered up the short characteristic, which was recessive. And that this gener this these plants, which had both characteristics, would be called hybrids. The plants which had pure characteristics for tall or for short would have would not be hybrids. They would be pure for the trait that they carried. Mendel also worked with the garden, with the, in his garden with four o'clock flowers. These flowers normally are red and white. But he didn't get characteristics which were tall, or which were dominant, excuse me, or recessive, but instead he got a blend a mixture. No color completely covered up the other one. He began by taking red four o'clock flowers and combining them or crossing them with white four o'clock flowers. We'll take pollen from this flower and fertilize the egg of this flower. In other words, this plant had the pure characteristics of being red, one from each of its parent. He had planted these long before, and he would always get red plants from the seeds. This plant was pure for white, and when he crossed them, he got flowers which were all pink. They were neither red nor white, but were a combination of the two. In other words, if the pollen came from this plant, each one of these flowers would have a red characteristic. And each one of them would have a characteristic for white. From the egg, that would be, wouldn't it? Mendel, again, crossed these hybrids. This is a hybrid, isn't it? Because it comes from a cross between two plants which have different characteristics. This would be the hybrid. He crossed this hybrid to produce seeds 
and the seeds when planted produced one red flower two pinks and one white then let's see why this pollen grain from this plant carry a red could combine also with the pollen with the egg would have a pure red plant this pollen grain for redness could combine with this characteristic of whiteness in the egg this pollen this egg which is carries a characteristic of red, could combine with a characteristic of whiteness in the pollen grain. And the pollen grain for whiteness could combine with a white characteristic in the egg. Mendel said that this was not dominant and recessive characters, but instead it was a blend there's something very important about this because in a blend we can always tell which is the hybrid those that are pink are the hybrid because they blend red color and white color we could say that white is a color we can always tell the pure characters because they will show up red and red are both pure. White and white are both pure. We can't do this where we have dominant and recessive because we can't tell the hybrids from the dominant characteristic, the pure dominant, because they both look the same. We've been able to use these, this information that Mendel discovered to develop many new and wonderful foods to help man. One example is in the corn plant. The farmers have long wanted to have good corn, lots of corn, and to raise as much corn as they could for the land, in the land that they had. To do this, they had to develop and select the traits in corn that they wanted, and then to combine them so that they would have a very, very good seed, seed corn to plant. If we had a corn plant such as this, excuse me. perhaps we can improve on this. We would want to have the plant taller. This corn is too low, and the mechanical corn pickers can't pick it up. So, perhaps we can make a taller plant. This is an improvement. What other thing would we want to have on our plant which would make it a better plant? Certainly one thing we would want to select for and be sure we had would be a bigger ear of corn. Perhaps we could also improve the root system. This plant could topple over in a wind because it is not, does not have a good anchor in the roots. So we could give it a better root system by selecting only those plants which had good root systems. And the root system would be able to gather more moisture and minerals for the plant. One other characteristic which we would want to select in our plant would be a strong stalk. So that when this fellow, called the European corn, bear, corn borer, burrowed into the stalk, the stalk would keep from breaking off 
and instead would stand and produce an ear of corn. By taking these characteristics and many more, man has been able to select a better ear of corn through combining these characters, making them pure, combining them, to, so we finally have corn hybridization. Here we see three cobs of corn. The one on each side is the parents of the one in the middle. Certainly if you were picking corn or were a farmer, you would want to have the large ear in the middle with more corn and larger kernels. By combining the corn on each side, we were able to end up with all of the desirable characteristics which we wanted in this uh, corn. And we see a tall, large cob of corn. So far, we have thought that the only way we can produce a new plant is by seed. But sometimes, but very rarely, sometimes a characteristic is different from either of its parents. In other words, it inherits a characteristic which, it has a characteristic which, with it, which it did not inherit from either of its parents. This is called a mutation. Let's do that again. A mutation is a characteristic which is not inherited from either of its parents. One of these mutations, or changes, involve the seedless grape. A grape without seeds. Let me show you. See? There are no seeds. But this one, shit here does have seeds there's one can you see it now if we don't reproduce a plant by seed how can that plant reproduce itself I think you'll be able to answer that question after the next part of the lesson Often, we can take a part of a plant and cut it off. We would clip off flowers and most of the leaves place this piece of stem in moist sand. This plant will send out roots and eventually we can replant it and have a new plant. Often we can take a large stem from this plant This, this is a piece of stem from a plant with a great deal like this. We can take a piece of this plant and cut it off. And then we must look for a bud on here. Here's one here. Just a very small little raised surf part of the surface. Place it on its side. Cut lengthwise. This bud will produce new leaves. And this part of the surface will produce roots. Let me place it in the moist sand. Over a period of time, we could get a new plant. This is one which was planted several weeks ago. And you will notice that it has 
a good root system already developed. Can you see these roots? This plant is ready to be planted in a flower pot. We can take potting soil, place some of it in the bottom of the pot. Place the plant so that the crown is about an inch. That's this is the crown. Place it about an inch below the edge of the pot. And then fill it up. Oops, my bag leaked here. Perhaps it's easier to pour it out the hole. And then, by placing a little water on it, the plant will continue to grow. You notice that our soil is about an inch below the edge of the pot. This is so that we can add water. One other way, other than stems, to produce plants is by taking a leaf. This is an African violet. Your mother may have them at home. We took a leaf from it. Placed it in the damp or moist soil. It would eventually grow roots and produce another plant. Let's review briefly what we have done today. We have found that plants have two parts, a male part and the female part. The male part will produce pollen, which combines with the egg to produce a seed. We can have two forms of fertilization, cross-fertilization, where the pollen comes from another plant, or self-fertilization, where the pollen comes from the same flower. We have also found that Mendel, studying some of the plants in his garden, found that there were dominant characteristics. What are dominant characteristics? They are a characteristic which covers or masks the other characteristic which is recessive. When we cross two plants having different characters, what are they called? It's a hybrid, isn't it? Crossing two plants having different characteristics is a hybrid. They are a characteristic which covers or masks the other characteristic, which is recessive. When we cross two plants having different characters, what are they called? It's a hybrid, isn't it? Crossing two plants having different characteristics is a hybrid. But we found that sometimes we don't have dominant and char recessive characteristics in the plant. In this case, we may have a blend such was the case with four o'clock flowers, where red and white flowers, when crossed, seeds would produce pink. We also found that plants, which differ from either of the parents, have a characteristic which is different. It's called a mutation, and that we can reproduce mutations by vegetative reproduction now, can you tell me what characteristics have you inherited? You have been viewing Science Grade 7.
a telecourse presented by the Minneapolis Public Schools. Your teacher today has been Richard F. Rumpley. Subject area consultants supervise the planning of each series, which is authorized by the Advisory Committee on Educational Television. Teams of teachers assist in the planning and evaluating of the various lessons presented. Series are produced through the Radio Television Department of the Minneapolis Public Schools. Directed by Louis House.